Sean Kelly on Movies is based in the city of Toronto, also known as Tecoronto. I, Sean Patrick Kelly, acknowledge the original stewards of the land that I occupy as a settler. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit.
Happy National Canadian Film Day! We are so delighted to welcome you to the 2024 edition of the National Canadian Film Day, or Cannes Film Day for short. This is one of over 1,300 screenings of Canadian films taking place today in every corner of the country and around the world. Cannes Film Day gives us the chance to get together and celebrate the richly diverse films and the wonderful stories and cultures that make up our country. Can Day is an initiative of Rio Canada, a nonprofit organization that brings festivals of Canadian films to communities and schools across the country all year long. This online Can Film Day event is presented by Sean Kelly on Movies, which is celebrating its 20th year in 2024. You can follow us on all major social media platforms at SK on Movies, and you can like and subscribe to get more content on this channel. We're going to kick off this event by showing you a short pre-show that the Cannes Film Day has put together for everyone participating across the country today. Is this AI? No. It's Canadian. Films that AI couldn't make. We are so excited to host an online screening of Manborg, directed by Stephen Kostansky. Manborg is the first feature from the Winnipeg-based film collective Astron 6, which consisted of Adam Brooks, Jeremy Gillespie, Matt Kennedy, Connor Sweeney, and Stephen Kostansky. Astron 6 formed in 2007, and their early output included various 1980s throwback short films, including Stephen Kostansky's 2008 short, Laser Ghost 2, Return to Laser Cove. 
Manborg is described as a cult classic throwback to 1980s sci-fi action films like Robocop and The Terminator. Shot entirely on green screen and utilizing a mix of practical and stop-motion effects, Manborg is such a low-grade film that when it was released on home video, it was only released on DVD or limited edition VHS since it wasn't even shot with high-definition cameras. The film has become a cult classic and has even been adapted into a limited edition comic book. While I could probably spend the rest of this introduction talking about why Manborg fits up in Cannes Film Day's 2024 spotlight of films that AI could never make, I thought it would be better to ask the man who made the film. So without further ado, here is a pre-recorded introduction of Manborg by the film's co-writer and director, Stephen Kostansky. This whole nightmare is my doing. Soon I will bring him to you. Hi, I'm Steve Kostansky, director of Manborg. Uh, I feel that Manborg is a movie that could never be made by AI because so much of it happened purely by chance and circumstance. So many factors contributed to what that movie ended up being. It certainly went through a lot of changes from script to screen. Uh, the screenplay was definitely one version of the movie. What we shot was something else, and what I edited was something completely different. I feel like there were so many factors that contributed to the final product being what it is that I don't see how you could enter enough prompts to possibly end up with that result uh, I've done through AI. It's a movie that is built entirely on uh, the kind of randomness that comes with indie filmmaking and comes with making a movie built entirely on a foundation of found objects and garbage and favors and just sort of like random circumstance. I guess an example of the randomness of Manborg and how I feel that it could never be generated through AI is so much of the action in that movie is constricted by the parameters of where we're shooting as well as the size of the green screen we were shooting on, the green screen that my mom sewed for the movie. So every set piece was built around like, well, what do I have room to actually do? And so a lot of the action is contained and small, uh, and a lot of it's extended after the fact through visual effects. But being uh, mostly shot in my parents' garage or the basement of a blind store with this small green screen. I can only accomplish so much, and so I feel like that factors into a lot of the staging and blocking, not just of the action, but of the dialogue sequences as well. Everything had to be crammed into a limited space, otherwise I'd have to be rotoscoping out the background. So yeah, I think that's a factor that contributes to the movie being what it is and giving it part of its unique personality. I also think that the performances in the film are another example of what makes it so unique. Working with my Astron 6 friends, the movie definitely would not be remotely as watchable if I didn't have Adam, Matt, Connor, and Jeremy on screen uh, doing the stuff that they do, coming up with the random shit that they come up with. I think that that is another major factor in the personality of the film is that they could ad-lib and throw things around in the moment and we'd go on weird tangents with things uh, like the whole romance subplot between the Baron and Mina was Jeremy's idea and it was just like a random thing he came up with that I let him run with in the movie and that's why it's in there so that's something that I think is a like very human element that only comes out of human interaction that is a result of uh, why the movie is the way that it is. Also, just in terms of the world of the movie, so much of it is built out of garbage, out of things that I would mine from the dumpsters around the University of Manitoba, specifically around their architecture department, because they're building a lot of models and things, so they'd have leftover balsa wood and stuff. And I would lift all of that and use it for my miniatures and for my sets and things. And so the look of the movie is entirely informed by what free stuff I could find that was just kicking around. Uh, circuit boards that my dad would get from uh, his work at Manitoba Hydro that they'd be throwing in the garbage. Uh, 
yeah, just kind of like any random stuff that was around the house, I would take and spray paint and glue onto things. And so that is another factor that informs the uniqueness of the movie is the fact that so much of it's built on found objects and just things that I glued together, kind of slapdash in the moment and was very uh, free flowing and random with how everything was designed for the film. So that's why I feel that the movie is wholly unique, warts and all, and that it's something that a computer can never generate on its own. And that's, uh, yeah, that's how I feel about Manboard. If you haven't already, proceed to the link in the description for details on how you can stream Manboard for free as part of Cannes Film Day. If you happen to be watching this introduction after the event's conclusion, the page also features links to alternative options to watch the film. After the film, check out the hashtag Can Film Day, that's C-A-N-F-I-L-M-D-A-Y, and get in on the conversation with your fellow Canadians across the country. And tag at Can Film Day on any posts or photos you put up on Facebook, X, or only Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. Thank you for being part of this amazing event. Now it is time to celebrate this country we call home. Sit back, relax, and get ready for an awesome Canadian film. I would like to offer my thanks to Stephen Kostansky for giving the intro and providing the uh, trailer footage for Manborg. Stay tuned for his upcoming film, a reboot of Roger Corman's Deathstalker, which is now in production.